welcome to another Three String Cigar Box Guitar Lesson. Uh, I'm Sean from Coda Guitar and uh, today we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, first lesson of the year, so I thought we'd do something that's a little bit um, banjo influenced. So uh, alongside um, you know folk and country, roots and blues, uh, there's, there's a lot of um, similarities between those styles uh, across different instruments as well. And uh, there's some quite nice sort of techniques that we can, we can pinch, we can use uh, on the Scarbox guitar. Um, and so I'm focusing today on a bit of strumming. Uh, so this is taken from, uh, there are different styles of um, sort of five string banjo uh, bluegrass playing. Uh, one is called uh, claw hammer or sometimes it's called frailing or like old time um, playing and, and it's, uh, it's where they play without using fing finger picks and uh, there's a lot of down stroke moving um, either on single notes uh, or strumming the actual strings. So uh, we're, we're just going to use that. Uh, this is beginner level, and so hopefully it's it's quite easy. Ho hopefully mo most people can uh, manage this. Uh, there there's some sort of like left hand chord changes, but um, hopefully you'll be able to, to to manage it. Sort of get both hands working together. So let's just check we're in tune, and then we'll get straight into it. So here is uh, low G. So we're standard G D G, and middle. and high G. Okay, uh, so just before we carry on, um, if you like this lesson, please uh, consider supporting the channel uh, just so we can put loads more content out this year. Uh, you can go to our website with the link below, uh, codetuition.com, and uh, you can download this score for a very reasonable price, uh, half price for the first seven days as well. Uh, there will be another series, uh, that, that this is in a series, so there'll be um, another few, uh, another sort of beginner level, a couple of slightly more advanced ones which are using sort of banjo um, influence techniques. Um, but yeah, with this one, what we're doing is we are just basically, very simple idea, we're just doing like a little flick. It's very much like an index finger movement, uh, so there's no kind of wrist rotation as such. It's just kind of extending your hand out a little bit. It's just start from a curl and flick through. And all we're doing to mix it up is we're just going to have the thumb playing the majority of the time on this bass. And then strum to start with, you can, you can just try and do that. Just like alternate between those and that's a dead simple one, two, three, four rhythm, okay? Now, uh, so because we're tuned D, G, D, um, this, sorry, G, D, G. This is in the key of G. Uh, and and um, we're going to be using uh, something that's uh, not quite a major scale. Okay, so for, first of all, we've got um, fret 2, fret 4, fret 5, fret 7, fret 9, 11, 12. That gives us our standard uh, major scale in the key of G. We're going to take the seventh note, which was fret 11, and we're going to knock it down to fret 10 instead. So we've got open, 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, 10. And that just allows us to, uh, it just gives it a much more sort of bluesy, um, classic rock kind of sound, uh, folk and country as well. Um, it allows us to, to sort of get a G7 sort of sound into it, and so it just has a bit more of an edge to it. So it's actually called a modal scale. It's a uh, it's a mixolydian um, mode, um, and it's just a major scale with the seventh note um, flattened, just knocked down a fret. That's it. And uh, on on the score, what I've done is I've just just sort of laid out how you can play this. Um, in what we call double stops, so it sounds more like chords. Uh, and double stops are just where you play two notes on adjacent strings, so on the uh, the high G in the middle D in this case. And so uh, what we're doing is we, we, we've either got uh, one shape where they're on frets next to each other, so to start with it's three and two, fret three on the middle, two here. And, uh, and we, we, we keep that shape and we move it up to frets five and four 
and then we're going to change the shape from there so it's now uh, two frets apart so it's now seven and five seven on the middle d and then we're going to move up to nine and seven and then ten and nine so back to the original shape so when i'm um when i'm on like adjacent frets i'm using uh, fingers two and one and when I'm uh, two frets apart, I'm using fingers one and three, three and one. And then just to finish off, we're back to three and one up there on fret 12 and 10. So we've got three and two, five and four, seven and five, nine and seven, 10 and nine, 12 and 10. Now, it's very important with chords that you do a couple of things. So you first of all, you've got a bridge right round with your fingers. So you've got to make sure you're not flat, otherwise you'll you'll just catch the string underneath. We've mentioned this in various other lessons. So you've got a bridge round, uh, like using these these final two joins. You see, there's not so much from the knuckle there. It's not like I'm coming around like this. It's, it's more about using these final two joints. Uh, you can either have your thumb further down the back of the neck. It's just as easy because they're quite thin necks instruments, these in general. It's just as easy to get your thumb over the top as well. But it's also really important that you don't leave your thumb planted. Otherwise, you'll end up in a horrible hand position. So you, you need to just relax in between. So every time you change, you just relax and then you just move up nice and easy so you see with my thumb over the top there I'm moving up same deal Let's make sure the thumb always basically just follows the index finger okay um, and then uh, we can also play double stops on the bottom two strings so this sort of happens later on in the um, a little later on in, in the example uh, and, and so here the tuning is slightly different so it's it's um, a, a different sequence of shapes but it's um, just the, the, the difference between uh, these two strings is slightly different to the difference between these top two so we've got frets 4 and 2 5 and 4 7 and 5 9 and 7 10 and 9 and 12 and 10 okay and we're going to adapt these slightly when, when we get into it, just so we, we, we pick out a, um, a, a C, C chord. But that's basically it. So uh, make sure you're comfortable moving around. Make sure you're comfortable with that strumming. And we'll just get straight on with it. So this, this particular example is um, we're starting off on frets three and two. And we're just going thumb, strum, thumb, strum. That's for a bar. One, two, three, four move up to five and four and then straight up to ten and nine so it's the same fingers each time and then swap over so nine and seven fingers one and three so three and two five and four ten and nine nine and seven and then the next line so that that was line two on the score this is now line three in the score uh, we're on 12 and 10 and then we're on 10 and 9 so swapping over to fingers um, one and three 10 and 9 9 and 7 sorry 7 and 5 my mistake swap over fingers again and then finish here so that's that's like a, a a g it is a g basically so so that those those two lines are basically like the first sort of section so it's frets three and two five and four ten and nine nine and seven right up to twelve and ten seven and five Sorry, from 10 and, uh, 12 and 10 to 10 and 9 first, and then go to 7 and 5, and then finish on 9 and 7. Okay, so 
Uh, I'm, I'm just kind of brushing over this just so we can get through it all reasonably quickly. Uh, so rewind and uh, try again. Um, you know, make, make sure you can play that as an eight bar cycle. That's a nice little first section. To make it more interesting, uh, feel free to like slide in between um, the, 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 the positions. So um, you, it is good to relax um, when you shift because it just makes it easier to kind of maintain the hand shape. But if you want a if, if, if you want the sound of a slide in between, you're going to have to work out what's the kind of minimum amount of effort um, uh, pressure that you're going to put on. So that you see, I've just lost the note there because I just relaxed too much. So that's better. But if I squeeze down too hard, then I'm, I'm just going to run out of stamina quite quickly. And also, you can you can make it sound out of tune if you're kind of too too heavy on the instrument. Um, so. There's a slide, there's a slide, yeah, it just makes it sound a bit more interesting, not all of them are, when you swap fingers it's a little bit harder to, to sort of maintain the slide sound, but you can just, you know, mix it up, it works quite well. Right, next section, so what we're doing here is we're going to C, now this might be difficult if you haven't been playing for very long because it involves barring. Okay, I've got an alternate version of this, which is on the score. So this is now on the bottom line of uh, page one of the score. Fret five, thumb right down here. You can see that. And then we need a really straight finger. So uh, I covered barring in quite a lot of um, detail on um, a lesson last year, Sunshine You Love by Cream. So you can check that out. I'll, I'll put a link to that. Roll off, get dead close to the fret. So you're using more of the side, thumb needs to be halfway down the back of the neck, and you're putting the pressure on, you're effectively trying to put the pressure through the neck so that it joins the thumb and the finger together. So fret five, that's a C, a C power chord, uh, which is written as a C5, and then um, we're, we're gonna try and, so that's dead flat, but we're then gonna try and bridge with this one onto fret seven. So finger three under fret seven in the middle string. So it's getting quite physical now, hopefully. If your instrument's set up for, for slide, if your action's quite high off the frets, some of these chord shapes are gonna feel quite awkward. Um, but you can always like swap, swap your nut out potentially for a, a lower one if you want. Fret seven, five, seven, middle string. You can even get your little finger, pinky finger on fret eight. That's on the middle string as well. So if that shape's all right, we're just using the same strumming. We're going thumb, strum, thumb, strum, thumb, strum, thumb, strum, thumb, strum. Okay. All of this is probably a bit fast. Go dead slowly to start with. But if that isn't working for you, we'll try an alternate one, which is uh, a normal standard G D G tuning C chord, difficult to play, but unfortunately it's super useful because it gets used loads when you're doing anything bluesy. Uh, fret five on the bass string, fret two on the middle string. Five, two, open, string one. Okay, so that's a bit of a stretch, but you don't have to bar. Both fingers are just bridging around there. And we're gonna uh, put the variation in by um, swapping from finger one to finger two. On, so that, this is all on the uh, middle string. So, so the normal C, you're on fret two. Then you go in with your second finger on the fret three. That creates a, a sus four sound, it's a suspended chord. And then you're actually just gonna take that off. So we've got an open D, open middle string. And that's actually a sus two chord and then we'll go back to the normal C. So it's normal C, second finger, sus4, open, and then back to fret two. And then same, same strumming. Back to C again. Uh, so you can, I, you can play either of those, uh, or you can even play them together if you want, you know, one after the other, it works fine. This first one, got more of a sort of standard bluesy sort of rock and roll bass 
sound. This one, C, C sus4, it's a little bit kind of lighter, more airy. C sus2, back to C. And again, I'm going far too fast here, so take your time. Don't don't be in a rush. Um, right, next section, we're uh, going to go for some um, double stops to to string chords on the bass string. So. We're going to start on frets three and two. So we're actually just altering this um, this mixolydian mode now, and uh, we're on uh, fret three, fret two, just because that is basically a C7 chord. Okay. So again, it works really well to give it a little bluesy kind of twang. Um, so we're going from there, fingers one and two on frets two and three, to frets five and seven, fingers one and three. And then we're going all the way up to 12 and 10. And that is uh, going back to a C. So that's like a C7 to a G. And that's a, a C to a, a G7. Okay, and same. It's got a bit of a twang there. Well, medium, play the G7. And then the second, so that's, um, that's now line two of page two on the score. Uh, so moving on to line three, we are going back to this C7. And then we're moving the same shape right up to 10 and nine, big jump that. So that's going from C7 to G7. Now you might, it's quite nice to slide, but you might find it easier to just take the pressure off just so you can get quickly up there. And then just to finish off, we're going to just step sort of up, up the scale effectively. So just one there, just one here, and then just a final strum there. So that's three and two, five and three, and seven and five. And so all of that section with the, the double stops on the bass strings is three and two, seven and five, 12 and 10, 10 and 9, next line, 3 and 2, 10 and 9, and then step up, 3 and 2, 5 and 3, 7 and 5. Again, loads slower than that to start with. Final section, uh, so yeah, definitely learn this. It's, it's basically um, eight eight bar sections, so just, just really take your time. Learn it a section at a time, uh, so you probably want to sort of stop this video, like, you know, scrub it back to the beginning of a different part and what have you. But the final part, we're going to a D, or a D5, D power chord. So these, these are pretty standard chords here uh, in terms of our GDG tuning. So that's fret two open middle string, fret two on the high G. Uh, incidentally, there's a, um, a chord uh, sort of reference sheet, uh, which has got like a whole bunch of different like beginner level chords on. So that's, that's available on the site as well, if you're interested. Um, and then we're going to an E minor. So that's four and two. Bass string four, middle string two, D5, E minor bit of a wrist adjustment there. Always bridging with your fingers. Stepping up from E minor to C. D, E minor, C. And then to finish off, it's like a different shape, a sort of different inversion of the G. So it's up on seven, uh, sorry, nine and 12. And then down to fret 10 on the top string. So that's going from like a G to a G7, got a bit of a twang to it. And then just to finish off, it's the same ending uh, on, on these bass strings as what we did previously. Three and two, five and three, and then just a strum on seven. Uh, five and three, five, and then seven and five there. All right, so all that section, we've got the D. So uh, it's written out, Slightly differently on the score. I'll, I'll cover that in a moment, but to start with, exactly the same. Thumb, string three, strum. Now we're doing the D for two bars. So that's one, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three. 
three, four, E minor, just one bar, C, just one bar, and then right up here, nine and twelve, just one bar, drop down to fret ten, like that, G seven, and then just finish off, three and two, three, five and three, and then strum on seven five. So just play that once, just play that once. Okay, so I'll do that again. D, two, second bar, three, four, E minor. Just one bar there. C, one bar. Right up to nine and 12, then nine and 10. And then bass. And then what's written on the score is uh, if you're finding all this um, challenging, don't go any further than that. You know, that's that's great. Re re really good practice. Uh, you can see on the, the demo, I sort of played it at a reasonable tempo as well. So it works. Um, it works quite nicely up to speed. It's, as soon as you play it faster, it, all that kind of sort of banjo sound is coming through a little bit more. Um, but. If you're finding this okay, what we can do is we can practice alternating uh, on the bass strings. So uh, on the D chord, we can go uh, thumb on the third string, thumb, uh, strum, sorry, and then middle open D uh, with the next thumb strum the same way. So it's string three, strum, string two, strum, low G, middle D do that twice, let's do exactly the same on the E minor. String three, string two, C, same, string three, string two. When we come back up here though, let's uh, just switch back to just playing the bass string with our thumb. that one more time so it's D middle string bass middle string B minor middle string C bass middle string just on the bass string now drop down to the G7 and then the ascending bass string double stops at the end so uh, that's basically it. Um, you might want to check the intro out again just to hear it in full. Um, like I said, definitely go around it in sections. But hopefully, um, you know that that's that's a good good way of um, work, working um, out how to sort of move around the uh, the fretboard a little bit more fluently because some quite big jumps there. Use your dots. Um, if you've made it yourself, don't forget to put dots on. Fantastically useful. Um, and uh, so generally speaking, three, five, seven, nine, so they're on the odd numbers. Uh, if you've got two dots at fret 12, um, that's because fret 12 is the octave of the open string. So G, D, G. Uh, but apart from that, these are odd numbers. So you're just using them for like navigation. If you need fret eight, it's in between those two. If you need fret five, it's that one. If you need fret 10, it's up here. Uh, or it's too low than that one, and so on. Um, but basically, um, uh, yeah, just just have, have a, become familiar with that. Um, the next uh, video we're going to do is uh, also a beginner level. It's it's getting a little bit more technical. It's um, sort of single string uh, picking. So it's got a bit of sort of uh, rockabilly, rock and roll, um, sort of bass line sort of sound to it, um, and. Um, there's another banjo style called uh, single string playing, uh, which is actually the sort of thumb pick um, version. Uh, I mean, you can completely play without, but um, it's, it's different to that uh, claw hammer I was talking about where they, they use thumb and uh, index finger, and it's, it's kind of copying what we do when we use a flat pick, you know, so the thumb um, imitates the down strokes and the, the um, index finger imitates the upstroke. Um, but I'll, I'll cover that in a little bit more detail, and that, that one's uh, coming next. 
So, yep, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. Um, check out the site. Loads of fantastic scores if you're interested. And uh, we shall see you here again soon on Code of Guitar.